Hello creatives! Happy second day of 2020. It's exciting times that we live in, isn't it? It's so fun. It's fun to be in 2020. I never thought I'd see 2020. I used to watch TV shows that they'd say 20 in 2020. I think there's a song about 2020. <gasps> Laura, she's on! You must be feeling better, dear. Oh my gosh, you guys gotta know Laura. She is so funny. She's such a good friend. Anyway, well, welcome here today. I hope I spent the morning making a video for you all about painting in the face. So we did that. We did that this morning and this one isn't quite done, but it is started. And I showed you how I go about to get the face. And again, it's not perfectionism. We're not forging anything or anything like that. But I do want to tell you that I do use resources. And so what sometimes I'll do when I, once I get my face on, I'll look for resources online or through books that I have or pictures that I have. And I'll print out um, some images. And I don't really worry about the images so much being copyrighted and stuff because I'm not painting that image. I'm just using the tonal features of the face and uh, things that have been photoshopped sometimes or sent in it can really give some definition into uh, their t the different tonal ranges so I might take like let's say for instance a picture like this and as you can see you can see where all the darks and lights are don't mind my fingernails I had them painted and they're chipping off and so you can see how the darks go around here, the darks in the inner parts of the eye. I don't think of them as uh, darks in the inner part of the eye. I think of them as shapes. Like this is a V shape in here. I will make close-ups so that you can check out the nose and the highlight on the tip of the nose. Look at that, that can tell you right there. All you're doing is painting, when you're painting that nose is painting that shape. It's so easy. It really is. And just think of it as easy peasy and you're, you're game to go. I go, this was a fabulous reference for an eyeball. You can just see the color tones in there. You can see where they shadowed. You can see the iris. You can see the highlights, the eyelashes, all of it. Oh, my puppy came in. Now he left. He just wanted to say hi. Um, and I'll take do black and whites. Black and whites are fabulous. Fabulous for it. They are online, Laura. They're all up now. All of these images are online. And so is the technique. And so is uh, the PDF of... It's not even really a PDF. It's just my words. Just telling me that... Telling you not to... If you're going to copy somebody, then you want to give credit to the artist. But you're never, ever going to copy it perfect. You know, it takes years and years for forgers to learn the artist's techniques in order to copy a painting. And you'll just make it your own. Use them as, you know, this was someone's painting in black and white. I found it off of the free, they they got free image sites, just so you're careful about if you're worried about images. But you can do this in, with your own photos. You can do it right on your phone. You can take a picture of someone. And you can put in all to get your values and your highlights and your low lights and just copy that picture right off your own phone. We have lots of tools in 2020. Use them. Um, we are very, very lucky. So we did that. It is a little bit uh, Belinda. Hi, are you in Florida? If you are, let's get together for lunch. Anyway, if you, uh, I just, you know, wanted to again tell you that this is not about perfectionism. This is about finding your vision. This is about, this painting is going to tell a story when you're done. It's going to tell you what you see inside of your head that's already there and ideas that we are going to bring forth out. And a little bit of an example of that is this. I have another painting here today that I wanted to share with you. Can you see her? Okay, all right, well, She's not really named yet, I've kind of named her. But as you see, there's a lot of symbolisms in her. 
And oftentimes what we do in intentional creativity is we'll either write a poem or a story about the painting, or we'll start with a poem and a story. Um, this gal, I've been writing a story about her. Um, she, she comes from, oh, I would say several hundred years ago, but she lives in a tribal community and it is near a, a civilized community. And she is often found to be looking out at the civilized community because she really, really wants to be part of that, but she's still in her tribal uh, life. Uh, she lives amongst the trees. You can see there's many trees, the dancing trees. Uh, she can see, she works with color. She loves color. She has a lot of spirit around her. She, um, she's contemplated, contemplative, and she will come with a story. If you want to zoom in, and it's really hard to show right now, but I also embellished this painting with what they call crash glass. And if you look around the outside where I painted the roses, the purple roses, I layered that with crash glass. What crash glass is, is it's those little pieces of glass after a car accident that lays twinkling in the middle of the street. And yes, you get out there with a broom and a dustpan and you sweep them up. And you can add them to things. And they, because it's tempered glass, they don't cut you. And it adds great sparkles. So if this is out and the sun is hitting this, all around her as she's in that portal, as you see that portal that she's in, all around her is like a cocoon and she is looking out. So she's a lot of fun. Um, she was a fun one to paint. She's actually a favorite of everybody's, which <laughs> she wasn't really my favorite. So it kind of surprises me. All right, so today, um, all right, well, we painted, the, we put your face in yesterday and then I made you a tutorial of filling your face in and doing your eyeballs. So if you wanna to go to Visionary Woman 2020, 2020 Visionary Woman, you will get um, you will get the video for it and you can follow along. I want to tell you also that my daughter Jenny is here today and I'm very proud of her. Jenny, can you do a little show and tell for us? Yes, come on, show us what you did. She went home and did homework. She did in her journal, she used a journal. And she did her portal and she drew her <laughs> face in the uh, 20 to 30 step U-line shape, or I should say crescent moon shapes. So I'm quite proud of her. See, I'm trying. Yeah, so we'll have to send her. I know, Laura, can you believe? <laughs> This, I'm not an artist, I can't do any of that, is totally, I mean, we all are, we're all creative inside. And then, it, let's just face the fact, you know, we don't have a choice. So, we won't go into that again, I already said that, when gave you the whole lecture on that one. All right, well, so when I'm teaching a class, in an in-person class, I do like to start you out with a, um, with a uh, meditation. And I don't really call it a meditation, I call it more of a vision quest. And usually it is directed around the theme of what we're trying to paint that day or what we're trying to discover within ourselves. So for instance, if we were trying to heal our chakras, we might walk you through a chakra process. If we were trying to paint um, our animal to totem, I might take you on a path through the woods or through the up and over the water and in, maybe into the cosmos, who knows, and you will discover your totem animals. If you want to paint a goddess, we'll go meet a goddess. If you wanted to paint a tree-inspired woman, we'll go into and look through trees. And I kind of wing it. I walk you step by step from it. It can be opened eyes, closed eyes. It's usually about a 10 minute. It's very simple. I like to put music to it. So if we're doing a moon painting, I'll find a lot of music and song that um, have to do with moons, like Moon River and uh, those kind of things. Um, and it just make it really fun and re really um, freeing. 
So because today we're not going to do a meditation, but I do want to tell you about your senses. And I want, and the senses that we're trying to draw in, into our paintings. And one of our senses that we have to be very grateful for is our sense of sight. Um, the things that we see, our everyday things, um, the things we see within our head. And what you want to try to do is, is you want to try to, anything that you like, just make a record in your head, it stays there. And of course, then we have the sense of smell and the, and the, and the sense of sound. And when you're painting, you keep that in mind. Smell, oh my gosh, the smell of, oh God, the smell of paint. I just, I can't stand it. I just love it. I want to work someday in the paint section of the store just so I can smell paint. Or how about, who loves the smell of Play-Doh? Play-Doh makes me want to sculpt. I can't wait to sculpt every time I smell Play-Doh. <coughs> All sorts of things smells like that. A sense of touch. That's why we touch our canvas. That's why I had you touch your canvas before and feel the canvas prior to, uh, to working on it, to actually putting the brush on it. And, I'll, you know, a lot of times before I start to create, I'll do a couple of deep breaths and... I tell myself, oh, let go of all the things in my past. Just go away. Then I take another deep breath and I say, let go of anything I'm worried about. All that stuff I have to do, cooking dinner, going to the grocery store, store cleaning, uh, horrible things and good things, but let's let them go. And then I tell myself to be in the present. This is about me, this is about spirit. Whatever spirit may be for you, um, we're not going to go into this. This isn't a religious program. Patty! Oh, I can't wait till you get down here. I need some. We are. Got our candles. We got our senses going. This is awesome. We'll have Patty come on one of these days. Patty sells essential oils, Young Living, and they're just fabulous. And she, they're really helpful when you need to be creative. Um, so, anyway, with that being said, we're, it, it's, you know, the spirit lives within you and you're, you can draw upon spirit however you want to, to get what your vision is inside of your head, from your right brain to your left brain, from your heart, onto the paper, onto the canvas. We're not here to be Picasso, or yes, we're here to be a Picasso, we're not here to be a Rembrandt, okay? Um, everything is going to be done in ab pretty much abstract, uh, don't be afraid. We're not here about perfectionism at all by any means. I, uh, you know, it takes years and years of practice to have perfect things, and that's not what this is all about. Uh, we'll be using symbols many, many times through, and we're going to draw, which we'll draw here shortly. We're going to draw a, a, a butterfly, and on the butterfly it has a quote, and on that quote, we're going to use that quote to put a symbol or an idea onto our painting. Um, I'm hoping that at some point I can teach you to make paint bubbles. I'm hoping to teach you to paint bumblebees. There's lots of different symbols. And if you want to learn anything, just please private message me and we can do a Zoom class. If you didn't get how to paint the eyeball on here, we'll just walk you, I'll walk you through it. And it isn't going to be a perfect painting, but it's going to be fun. That's for sure. So let's get started. Any other business? I don't think so. Just had a, I explained it and you all understand what. You need to do some breathing and all that? I did the breathing. Oh, I missed it. I was typing. <coughs> I was she did it again. Online. I think she was sleeping. I was answering I, questions online. I think she takes this time to take her quick nap. Mm -hmm. Anyway, all right. Let's get started, ladies. Well, you're at 15 minutes. So, the jar. Jar has prompts in it. Prompts are printed on butterflies because I feel like a butterfly is a caterpillar and when it comes out of its cocoon, it turns into a beautiful flying free thing. Are, are butterflies bugs? Or insects. Insects, which is a bug. Well, kind of, yeah. But not a scary bug. Not a creepy bug. 
I mean, we all love to have butterflies. I mean, I've, I've had messages from people that have told me that they think of a butterfly as a lost loved one yeah. or has come to visit. We use a bird. We use the blue jay bird as a lost loved one coming to visit. Um, I see myself as been, you know, in a cocoon for the last five years, as most of you know. And that's part of why we're starting this blog is it's about healing with creativity and what I have done in creativity to heal and how I have progressed. No matter what you've been through, we've all been through different experiences in our lives. So I'm going to move on because we're trying to keep these short and they're not very short. So we go in here and we draw. And we pull one out. Butterfly. You do have a printout of all of these butterflies with the quotes on it and with extra butterflies to write your own quote. If you want to use your own, do your own. Um, that's great. You can do your own or you can follow right along with us. We have some of you following along with us. But please, please, please post. Any questions, post your what you've been doing. Let's just keep, this is our group. This is our group to create, share, and inspire one another. Right, Patty? I'm so glad you're here with us. I'm so glad you're here, Laura. And Belinda was on. I don't know if she's still on. But Belinda is uh, also one of my friends that she uh, lives in both places. Where she's I live. on. Ah, hi. She's on the share at my... Okay, because see, we've got several different pages that this is playing on. Well, so I did, a, I did a watch party, so... You got the watch party going? Watching through my stuff, yeah. It's party, party, watch party. I had Rich and Dave on here earlier. They are off now. Aww. Dave came on, though. He probably no, just... Dave and Esty said something in California. Oh. And, and Rich? Yeah, Rich Jacobia from school. Oh, cool. <laughs> Guys are invited to watch this. I mean, I know that we're calling a visionary woman, and I know they get a little freaked out, but hey, you know, this is for everybody, right? Okay, oh, butterfly. Okay, it says, have courage and faith to go through massive change to become beautiful. Wow. After we were just talking about that. Mm -hmm. huh. Isn't that interesting how you can just pull stuff that just, it surprises me every single time. I mean, I just pull it and I, and I'll, something comes. All right, so what I do now, because I'm using this quote, I pick out words that mean something to me. So I'm thinking courage. I like faith. We had faith in ours yesterday. I like change and I like beautiful. So what would I paint onto this canvas? That's my question. What would I paint onto this canvas that would show courage, faith, change, and beautiful? Uh, courage. Could... Chet says she likes the butterfly concept. You're um, an amazing butterfly, just like Kevin. Ah, oh, Chet, you're not my favorite friend. And by the way, you know what? I got to thank all of you for your positive comments. I mean, this is really difficult, and I've been challenged to do this. I well, it was not something I wanted to do, but you know, when you get challenged, you get challenged, right? And you don't back down. <gasps> courage. Terry, Pas Terry Paskey's watching. Terry Paskey, my friend, I miss you so much. You gotta plan a trip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. We are usually up right now snowmobiling with her. If you go back to my webpage and watch my I played it yesterday, our snowmobiling video. <laughs> back on task. My daughter's giving me the sign. <laughs> back on task. Have courage, have faith, um, have and change to be beautiful. Well, I'm going to, again, put this on right onto the canvas like I did yesterday. It's with matte medium. I put it on the back side, place it somewhere on the canvas, and I put the matte medium, which works just like glue. You can use glue, but you can use Elmer's glue, you can use a glue stick, you can use Mod Podge, whatever you have on hand. 
You don't even have to put these on your canvas. I, I guess we just started that yesterday. I don't know. Maybe we'll put them all on the canvas. Or, you know what? You could put it in your journal and you could write about this. You could, right? Yep. All right. Courage, faith, change, beautiful. Courage. And I could do a sword. And where would I put the sword? Yesterday I did a heart. Because my friend died, La, Cha La Chapelle, Chapelle, she said that the heart is a sign of faith and um, and love and positivity. Hi, Erin. Good to see you. Anyway, well, how about a caterpillar? Where would I put a caterpillar? Mm. A caterpillar. Well, all right. Well, see, when I get stumped, no shame in the game. Ha. I pull out all my resources. Heart. One of my favorite resources is tattoo books. Oh, that's backwards. But, and so, oh, I think I like this. Okay, look at this one right here. See that butterfly right there? And it kind of has still a caterpillar or look to the bottom. I think I'm going to do that with my butterfly. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to first take a piece of chalk just to be sure that's what I want. And then I'm going to have it go like this. And then we're going to make it like this. And then we're going to make our wings even bigger and prettier. Oh, I like that idea. Okay, so... We're gonna get out some paints here. We'll do this quickly. If you can follow along, you can add your own in. We'll put this on and then I'll let you go for today. So a caterpillar body can be any color really. We'll start out with brown with a tail because she's leaving a beautiful tail in her wake. She's leaving stardust in her wake. We're gonna put her head up here, okay? I'm gonna actually leave the words right into the middle. Um, why I always go to orange for my butterfly. But we're gonna go with some orange. I'm using golden paints because I prefer golden because they blend nicely, but you can use anything. You can use a craft paint from Walmart, anything that you'd like. Craft? Craft, not crap. <laughs> Just clarifying. Can't take her anywhere. Mm. We're going to lunch after this. I think we're gonna have some Thai food. We tried to go yesterday, but they were closed. Every place was closed practically yesterday. And by the way, do you know that they were closed at McDonald's on New Year's Eve? I had a Big Mac attack at 7:30. We were supposed to have lobster, but we were too lazy to cook. And I had a Big Mac attack. I said, you know what, I, ne I haven't had a Big Mac in 10 years. I'm going to McDonald's and getting a Big Mac. It's New Year's Eve. Closed. They were closed. And I said, why are you closed? They said, it's New Year's Eve. I said, it's 730 on New Year's Eve. But anyway, they saved me lots of calories. Sure did. They sure did. So. Well, not that much. Just a lot of burger from Wendy's. Tattletale. <laughs> See, I can't take her anywhere. So, anyway, well, so what we'll, what I do here then is, is I just keep playing along. Now remember to take care of your brushes. Remember I told you yesterday I didn't take care of my brush. And voila, the poor little thing bit the dust. Maybe not, though. Gloria said you probably can fix it. I know, she said with Murphy's oil. Fixes right. everything. So we're going to put some antennas on. And you know, I'll play with her later. I'll play with this butterfly later. Now, if you want to learn how to do the face again, go into um, 2020 Visionary Woman. You, it's open to all of you. And there is a tutorial on there and exactly how to do the face. So you can watch that. I made it. I hope it's good. My butterfly is flying with courage, faith, and she is becoming beautiful. 
and I am going to add stars. So there's ways to make stars because she's leaving. It's kind of like my own Tinkerbell with Walt Disney. I told you the story about how I always thought I was going to be the next Walt Disney. Did I ever tell it, share that story? Uh, well, maybe next time. I really thought I was, but well, there is only one Walt Disney. Oh. I used to have a company called Kidstock Productions. I created children's learning games and activities. And uh, I sometimes I just put dots as stars. See? She's just leaving it all in her wake. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did get to move to Florida though, so I guess that's close to being a Walt Disney. Who do you guys admire? Hmm? Anybody got any special people in their lives that they think that they really admire? I love Frida Kahlo. And you know what I like about her is, is that she just wasn't famous. And she just painted what she painted. And she overcame so many obstacles and so much pain. And there's a prime example of using creativity to come over pain and not just mental pain or heartbreak I mean real physical pain I'll tell you what once I once I start painting I mean I have a very bad back and once I start painting I totally forget I have a bad back and I just I go into something somewhere where, where are we on time 27 minutes oh we only got three minutes left please and then you'll have to risk watch the replay Let's put some, let's put some red in here. I don't know what it is about this butterfly thing. And then of course I love color. I, everything I do has involves color in some way or another. I just can't believe you guys come on here and watch me make a fool out of myself. <laughs> oh. oh well. In the end, we'll all have a good time, right? So I just keep layering, layering and over layering, and that's how I get that look of the stained glass and, and the freedom of it all. So now you can see over the next 20 days how we are adding. We've added the hearts. Um, just to tell you, we've done our, first of all, we wrote our intention. Then we added the portal. Then we added our figure, our visionary woman, whatever that may be yourself, it may be a goddess, it may be someone else, but your visionary woman. I drew a card to get mine and I drew one that had twins on it. So I decided to put two women in mine and I thought at first it was gonna be, because I'm a Gemini, it would be my, my inner and my outer self, my evil and my good self is what my husband says. But now I think it's going to be my daughter and I, because she's been helping me all along with this. So maybe we're doing this vision since we're doing this vision together. And you can see how our story is, is starting to take form onto the canvas. And in the end, we'll have, we'll have, you'll have your own story. So if you have a journal, if you feel like we're writing in your journal about what you've experienced today or what your painting experience is, it's a great way to record how you're feeling and, and to help you see that vision inside of you and uh, what wants to come out. Journaling is, is fabulous and you don't even have to be a writer or anything. You just free write and whatever comes out, comes out. Uh, if you're painting along or if you're painting aside from us, please share in our Facebook group. Uh, tell your friends, come on, the more of us in here, the merrier, right? We've got a party started. And we're only on day two of this party. We've got 18 more days left of the party. Ah, so anyway, so we've got the butterfly in there and we'll see what else everything go, happens for, with tomorrow. I'm going to lunch. Then I'm going to dinner at my friend's house. And by the way, Patty, guess what? I'm going to Wayne and Rhonda's for dinner. Nana and a boo boo. So we are going to have fun tonight. Uh, we miss all of you that aren't here with us, and uh, we'll see you again tomorrow, I hope. Hope.
unless they chicken out. And then see this other visionary woman right here, my daughter, she can do it. Cause <laughs> this is really hard. Anyway, uh, same bat place. Same butterfly place. Sure. Same butterfly channel. And let's spread our wings, lady, and let's go out and make a difference in the world. Anyways, love, sending love to you all, and we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, send me messages. I love responding on our Facebook page, and I love what everybody's putting so far. Alrighty, see you later. Love to all of you. Bye-bye.